In March 2022, Sabre Jewel Gaming released its first ever retro review with WWE's 2K16. Even now, we're continuing its legacy, doing live streams on WWE 2K23. However, all of these live streams began with WWE 2K22. Hello there, welcome to Sabre Jewel Gaming where we always take the high ground and welcome to our retro review of WWE 2K22. Going back to watch my first retro review and preparation for making this was kind of cringeworthy but it was necessary because to imagine a game in 2022 that was 6 years in advance of WWE 2K16, well that's something that should have taken leaps forward. So. Has this game done that? Well, we sort of have to ask one other question before we can answer that one, which is, how does it compare to its direct predecessor? Well, in 2021, we didn't actually get a wrestling game from WWE. The one before it was in fact WWE 2K20, which was known for being an absolute joke. It was a disaster. It was a game so heavily riddled with glitches that this game had very little to be compared to but still had to bring the fans back on board. So did they manage to do that? Well let's take a look, we'll have a look at the overall gameplay a little bit later on because nothing works without that. But let's take a look at the game modes they threw in. Now they introduced one called My Faction, this was one that didn't particularly appeal to me at all, but this was a card collecting style game that allows you to gather new cards and new ones are released weekly, um, and you can then use these to complete challenges, and again you do do actual wrestling with it, but there's something about this card collecting fad in video games that just isn't for me. However, the main mode had to be the showcase mode. In previous games we had the 2K Showcase, and in 2K16, the last one we reviewed, we had the Stone Cold Steve Austin version of this. This time around, we're looking at wrestling legend Rey Mysterio. Now, how much you're going to enjoy this depends on how much of a fan you are of Rey Mysterio. However, I have to say, there are a few aspects of this that let it down compared to the version with Stone Cold Steve Austin. First of all, The game has a nasty habit of intersplicing the match with clips from real life matches and this probably sounds like a good idea, however it just doesn't work, if anything it takes you out of the match. What also doesn't help is the fact that we constantly throughout the match and the intersplicing get little comments from Rey Mysterio talking about his perspective of the match, again it sounds really good in theory. But in reality, it's kind of annoying. The reality is, Rey Mysterio isn't as charismatic on the mic as he is in the ring. Also, unfortunately, the matchups just aren't as exciting. Unlike Stone Cold Steve Austin, where we've got a strong narrative running throughout his career, trying to fight the man and take over WWE against the boss's wishes, Rey Mysterio doesn't have that. And unfortunately, it sort of feels like skipping from one match to the other, and despite one or two really exciting WCW entries, it's WWE heavy, and is also emitting a number of really big opportunities and big matches, such as his debut match with Kurt Angle, as he wasn't available in this game. It's still fun I'm sure, especially if you're a Rey Mysterio fan, but for me, This game mode really just doesn't appeal anywhere near as much as it did in WWE's 2K16. However, it was a returning mode that made the difference for me. First seen back in 2008, it was only here in WWE 2K22 where my GM mode finally made its huge return. Originally called GM mode back in 2008's version of the game, this allows you to pick a brand such as Raw, Smackdown or NXT, and then establish your own cards. You pick your own draft of wrestlers and you work through various challenges, setting up matches for your shows weekly and building towards a pay-per-view. You crown your own champions, build your own teams and establish rivalries that you can blow off at the big major shows such as WrestleMania, Survivor Series or Extreme Rules. 
Give them too many matches and physically they'll become exhausted and injured. Don't give them enough matches, they'll become demoralised and won't want to stay, so it is a bit of a balancing act. There is only a limited number of special match types available within this option, so you can only play in matches such as Extreme Rules, TLC and Hell in a Cell. A lot of the other match types aren't available. And you can only do one on one or two on two. No triple threats and no fatal four ways. But other than that, it's still a great deal of fun. But none of these game modes will really matter if the in ring wrestling, the actual combat systems, aren't very good. So, how do they play out in this game? Well, I'm glad to say substantially better than they did in WWE's 2K20. The combat system in this has gone back to a much more simplistic and basic way of playing. Everything does its job just fine. The options within the game, the types of moves you can do, they all work perfectly. However, it's nothing revolutionary. I will say, whilst it is substantially better than the glitch-filled disaster we got a couple of years earlier, I don't really think there's much of a difference between this and 2K16 as mentioned earlier. However, whether that's a problem or not is a matter of opinion. If something works fine, do you really need to change it? Maybe not. I would say I'd have liked to have seen a little bit more freedom in how we can use things such as tables, ladders and additional weapons. It seems that most of these are locked into pre-programmed styled moves rather than allowing you a little bit of creativity, and that is a shame. However, on the whole, given what we'd had a couple of years earlier, I think most people were really relieved and quite enjoyed this game's combat system. The roster of wrestlers was really good, especially once you'd gradually unlocked all the legends. However, there were a few issues I had with this. Yet again, people were expected to buy DLC if they wanted to have the full roster of new wrestlers, with those DLC packs coming out one by one. However, those weren't what bothered me. Instead, it was more the special edition and pre-order versions of the game. Do you want the NWO? Of course you do. You shouldn't have to pay extra. What about The Undertaker, a guy who's been in so many versions of the game multiple times? Why should we have to do a pre-order exclusive to be able to get three versions of a wrestler that should be in the game anyway? Given how many fans, myself included, felt massively robbed by the previous version of the game, doing this just felt like a really dumb move for WWE, and one that felt a bit money-grabbing and a bit nasty. These characters should be available from the start. I don't mind them doing updates for wrestlers that aren't available just yet, that come into it later on. But special legends like Hulk Hogan, the NWO, Andre the Giant, The Undertaker, we have seen these characters in games many times before. We shouldn't have to do or pay extra to get those people again when we already had them in previous versions of the game. The WWE's 2K22, how does it feel overall? Well, obviously it's a dramatic improvement from the previous, that's not saying much, but there is some really exciting game modes, including others I haven't mentioned, such as My Rise. However, is it a massive leap forward from older versions, such as WWE 2K16? Well, not really, but these games never are. We keep buying them anyway, so Obviously, there's something about them we want to go back for the newest additions. We have updated rosters, we have new game modes and returning game modes. So, overall, not too bad. And especially if you're a fan of Rey Mysterio, you might enjoy the showcase mode a lot more than I did. It might be a little bit unfair of me to keep going back and comparing this to 2K16. We know these are annual releases, so we know that they don't change a great deal year on year. So maybe overall, what we should be doing is just looking at this game on its own. Is it any good? Of course it is. It's got great controls, a great roster of wrestlers, and a lot of depth. And there's so many game modes, including ones I haven't discussed, such as My Rise. There's bound to be something, if you're a wrestling fan, that you're gonna love. Now, obviously I'm not going to do my normal retro take on this game because I've been playing it for the past year and it only came out a year or two ago. 
so that wouldn't quite stand. What I would say is that this game clearly still stands up now. Whilst the newest version of the game has made improvements, they are overall quite minor. And if you're looking for a cheaper version of a wrestling game, you don't want to fork out for the latest one, I would strongly suggest trying this one out. You'll still get most of the quality game modes that you're looking for, but, you know, at a discount price. So, what kind of rating am I going to give WWE's 2K22? Well, do you know what? I genuinely actually wanted to downgrade this a little bit because I didn't enjoy the showcase mode with Rey Mysterio, and I got really annoyed by the DLC aspects. But I played this game so much, and I had so much fun doing the My GM mode streams, as you all saw, I felt like I have to give this at least an 8 out of 10. If the showcase mode had been a little bit better, it probably would have got a 9 out of 10. But overall, this is still a good return to form. But what do you think? Comment below, let me know. And until next time, take the high ground.